Hello, welcome to another episode of Where the Stones Have a Story to Tell. Today in Gilbert Hill State Forest, we are talking about niches. Niches are small enclosures boxed in with two sides and a top stone. Some are see-through, some are closed. But one thing they all have in common that I found out here is that they all are fairly close to what appear to be ceremonial sites. Very nearby, a cluster of different stone objects that would lead one to a conclusion that this was a sacred place. What were niches used for? They were used to leave offerings. Offerings could be perishable goods, they be, could be hard goods like uh, stone tools or jewelry, what have you. Now, some of the interesting aspects of niches is their orientation to solar events, sunrise, sunset, and noon on the winter solstice, summer solstice, fall, spring equinox. And very briefly, I wanna get into how the sunlight and the shadow may play a role in the function of a niche. This niche faces directly to noon on the winter solstice, exactly halfway through the year at its darkest day. Now imagine how the sunlight would come in and light the sides of the niche and deep into the niche. In some of the books about other ceremonial sites in New England, such as America's Stonehenge, shadows and darkness play a role in the relationship to the spirit underworld. So as we can see, niches were very important, ritual Native American stone structures. Let's transition to a smaller niche we've seen in a prior episode. I want to take a close up of the niche that we see in episode four of the dual prayer seats off to the right of the rear prayer seat. You can see the top stone here, but also let's take a close look here. This is not just a stone that's been laid down. There are several stones holding it in place off to the left side of its opening. This is about uh, two feet in its height of the opening here now, but I can tell you as I dug into this uh, ground a little bit, it's very, very deep. So I'm guessing that uh, a fair amount of soil has built up over time here. And I just wanted to leave you with the fact that this niche faces directly to sunset on the winter solstice. Now, let's take a look at a split stone niche. Now this split stone niche was also found in the fourth episode on dual prayer seats and it looks down toward the prayer seats, wedged in the middle of a split boulder high atop the rocks. You can see inside this split boulder to the right and left of the niche are uh, two little walls, a top stone, and it's enclosed in the back. So this would be an example of a closed split stone niche. And I like to read from Mary Gage's America Stonehenge Decipher. Split stone portals are all associated with entry and exit to the underworld. The features that are recorded as being portals usually have triangular stones of the opening or an associated niche or a wall that is used to link one or more of the features together. So what we've got here is pretty cool split stone niched used as a portal to the underworld. All right, let's take a look at a triangular niche. As we come in closer, to this triangular niche, uh, I wanted to bring your attention to uh, its orientation or proximity to the aligned boulders from the first episode. And so here you can see that triangular niche. Now I bet uh, faces in the stone would probably want to have a conversation about whether or not that triangle top stone is shaped like a duck's head. But if you're wondering how or who would get a stone of this size down to this spot, all you have to do is look at that stone right there. And that is the last and largest stone in the aligned boulders from the first episode. So they were moving very, very large boulders, as you recall, if you've seen the first episode, four aligned exactly to 
north, south, east, west. But I just found, as I'm here, something unbelievable, and I did not know it was here until now. As I came down for this shot, right here is a chamber, a niche. This is amazing. Alright, I've got uh, my Lumi Cube out here, and we can just see inside this chamber, niche. Very interested to see what uh, you all think of this, but this is a hell of a find. And uh, Tully's keeping watch. So we can see up top here the last boulder in the aligned boulders triangular niche and some type of chamber here. In the opening scene for this episode, I mentioned that niches seem to be found, in my experience, close to ceremonial sites. Certainly the dolmen, which is right next to the aligned boulders, and the aligned boulders would be evidence of that. Certainly a ceremonial site here. And then with that chamber alongside of it. It's just, uh, it's an amazing thing. All right. Well, if that hasn't got you interested in the stone structures here at Gilbert Hill State Forest, I'm not sure what is. I can't believe I just ran into that. Until next time, we will end up doing some faces in the stone, carved effigies, and we'll start with some bird effigies. All right. I have to admit that I got so excited about finding that chamber unexpectedly that I forgot to discuss what I wanted to talk about with regard to the triangular nature of this structure. I'm going to read from the Handbook of Stone Structures in the Northeast United States by Marion James Gage, where it says triangular shape stones are well documented as being used for the purposes of blocking out. In Connecticut, it was found the use of the number three was interchangeable with the triangle and was used for protection. All right, that covers our episode on niches. And until next time, thanks for watching.